Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I am Rider of Dinosaurs. In today's video, we're going to go back to Flat Earth. Yes, Flat Earth again. And this is just to, you know, get away from 5G and COVID-19 and whatever. Uh, oops, I already said COVID-19. I might get this video demonetized. What a surprise. But this video talks about something I've never heard before which is refreshing in a way. A bouncing shadow, yes. But before we get started, a big thank you to all my Patreons and I'm hoping all of them are keeping safe. Atticus Finchikas, Bella Charge, Cajun Drifter, Clifford Reynolds, Elizabeth Schneider, Frank Kelly, Globus Schillers, Janie, Jared, Lee W. Mama Murder, Mr. MP, Patrick Miller, Federang, Robert Innocencio, Robert Williams, Stringy News 1, Sebastian Sauce, Surf, Bishanti, William Inabnet, Christ Puncher, Conrad Silas, and my newest Patreon, Chismondo. There are a number of globe earthers who have been commenting about the moon. They seem to think the phases of the moon are caused by the Earth's shadow. Our survey said... Now I know this must be confusing for a flat earther, but bear with me for a second. No one, no globe earther has ever said that the moon phases are caused by the Earth's shadow. Ever. You must be confusing the commenters with flat earthers. And that this proves that the Earth is a globe. If they were right, one would think we would never see a half moon during the daytime. Now that is the reason why we always say that flat earthers don't know anything about astronomy. Because, as I've mentioned before, and I hate to repeat myself, globe earthers have never said that the moon phases are caused by the Earth's shadow. Only flat earthers do that. This is essentially what they seem to be describing on a flat Earth and on a globe. The light coming down from the sun and bouncing the shadow of the Earth onto the moon. This most certainly is not necessary to cast a shadow onto the moon. Not only it's not necessary, it's an asinine idea that you can bounce shadows. But let's see where you're getting on with this. I think I have an idea. I hope I'm wrong. The moon is quite capable of casting its own shadow on both models. Now, just out of curiosity, is it possible to bounce a shadow? I would go with, um, no. The answer is yes. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I didn't want to believe it, but I knew this is where he was going to. Oh dear Lord. But it would require something to stand between the light source and the reflected surface. Here we have created a spotlight by shining a phone light through a tube of paper. On the floor, we have a pan of water that is bouncing that light upward onto the wall. Okay, so far so good. Now I'm going to stick my finger in that light and bounce my shadow. Now, I know you people get angry when we say that you know nothing about anything and you try to teach others about it. Well, you don't know nothing about anything. It... There's nothing to bounce. You're blocking the light. The light is made of photons. The photons are the things that actually bounce. You're just blocking the path of a few photons. That's why it creates that shape, because it's the shape of your finger, which is the shape of the object blocking the photons. Here, let me see if I can explain it in an easier way. And of course, anyone who feels that I'm wrong or totally wrong, feel free to let me know in the comment section. But 
Let me try anyway. Okay, in this picture, you're shining a light onto the water, which is a reflective surface, and that surface is causing the photons to reflect onto the wall. So far, so good. In this image, you're doing exactly the same thing, but with an added element. You put your finger between the light, the source, and the reflective um, surface, which is the water. And that is causing the photons not to reach the reflective surface. You, can you see where I'm getting with this? Since part of the photons are not reaching the reflective surface, they're not being reflected onto the wall. Now, I know this is a very simplistic way of explaining this, but I think anything more than that will confuse your brain. Now, there's another experiment you can try. Get a circular mirror or just any kind of mirror, put it in the same place. Now, take some tape, put it across the mirror. I don't know, make it a cross shape or a, uh, any kind of shape you want and then shine a line on it, as long as you can get the tape as well. Now, look at the reflection on the wall. Tell me that you've bounced the shadow as well. And just to entertain the thought, Check this out. I'm going to bounce a shadow by placing a yellow block in the water instead of putting my finger in the air. Ta-da! Ridiculous! Again, the same principle applies. You're blocking the light of reaching the reflective surface, so it's not being reflected. So only the bits around it is being reflected, and you can see the shape of the hole the object is causing on, on the reflection, that's it. You're not bouncing any shadows. Dear Lord. The end point here is that there is no evidence that states the phases of the moon prove the Earth is a globe. Actually, we did get some evidence. We got some evidence that you know nothing about what you're talking about. Honestly, pick up a good book. And if you can read, read it. But not any book, not the Flat Earth book. Just pick up a book on photons, on how reflections work, on how an object blocking photons can cause a shadow. And if those photons get reflected, that shape will continue onto another surface, like a wall, like in your example. I know I'm talking very, very slowly. This is just to see if you can understand what I'm getting at, because going fast doesn't work for you people. However, in 2009, researchers from the University of Melbourne and Princeton University claimed that the reflection of the Earth's land masses and oceans can be seen on the moon. Our survey said... Here is an interesting Science Daily article where you can go and read about it. Now, I wanted this to play out before I interrupted it and give out a more plausible explanation of what he was saying. Now, what he did is what all flat earthers do is they glance at a title and don't, they don't read anything. Just to make everything clear, let's put on screen what he said. I'll replay the, the audio and I'll put it on the screen then. In 2009, researchers from the University of Melbourne and Princeton University claimed that the reflection of the Earth's land masses and oceans can be seen on the moon. So now let's read what it says there. Earth shine reflects Earth's moon and continents from the dark side of the moon. Not exactly the same thing, is it? Researchers have shown for the first time that the difference in reflection of light from the Earth's land masses and oceans 
can be seen on the dark side of the moon, a phenomenon known as Earthshine. Not exactly what he was on about, is it? But wait! There's more! So if you scroll down just a little bit from the topic, you'll see this. Sally Langford from the University of Melbourne School of Physics, who conducted the study as part of a PhD, says that the brightness of the reflected Earthshine varied as the Earth rotated, revealing the difference between the intense mirror-like reflections of the ocean compared to the dimmed land. Hmm. Now, what did he say? That the reflection of the Earth's land masses and oceans can be seen on the moon. I hope you all got what I did. Um, he grossly simplified the whole thing. And this is all I have for you today. But before we go, I'd like to leave you with the end of his video, which for me, it's hilarious. All right? I hope you enjoy it. We are not claiming this is the case. This is just something to think about. We'll talk more about the moon and moonlight in another video. Thank you for watching. And this is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in my next video. If you like this video, subscribe. Hit the bell button. Like. And don't forget to share. If you wish to support me further, consider buying my merchandise or becoming one of my Patreons.